Hello everyone, it's Rob Josek from OneCloudX. I thought I'd create this video today to demonstrate the suite analytics solution that the NetSuite platform provides out of the box. I took a potential client through the solution yesterday and I thought it may not be a bad idea to actually create a little short video that showcases some of the features and functions contained in that solution. The Suite Analytics solution extends on the functionality that there is today around the reports and around the Save Search feature that's there. Um, it just provides a, a more visual sort of representation where it brings together the pivot table visual versus graphical versus a, a list or, or table view. So, so here I am, I'm logged into that demonstration um, um, instance of, of NetSuite. I'm just logged in as the administrator. Um, and when you do activate the analytics solution in NetSuite at a role level, it shows up in the actual dashboard center of that role. So if I just click on analytics, it will take me to the actual suite analytics solution. Out of the box, you get a number of templates. These templates are transactional based templates. So for instance, there's purchase order, there's sales orders, there's web store orders, inventory, inbound, outbound transactions, and the like. Now, there's two components to the actual suite success, sorry, the suite analytics solution. There's the workbook element, which is the reporting element that you, where you re represent the data in the way you want to show it. And then there's the data set element, which is where you start. And this is where you compile and create your data sets, which is effectively your, your data model. Um, and your data lake of information, and then that thing gets represented into the workbook. So if we jump into to the data set model, I've created a couple of examples here, but let's go and create a new data set, and we'll create it for an actual transaction. So like I said, I'm actually creating the actual data lake of information, and I'm creating it in specific to the actual transaction. So if I click the actual transactions, it will show me pretty much all the actual fields available on the transaction record, where I'm able to now restrict that information and show what information that I want to contain in that data set. So at the moment, like a save search, this is where you drag and drop to add your criteria. So in this example, I want to uh, show invoice transactions. So we therefore go and drag type over, into the actual criteria area. Now we're actually restricting the actual view to only contain invoices. Um, you can also so you can see all the transaction records here. You can, you can bring over multiples, but in this case, we're just going to keep it simple and just have invoices. Um, as well as that, we also want to restrict the data based on date information. So let's just drag over the date. And over here, you have the facility of specifying um, a date range, um, relative dates. So for instance, you know, within, before, after, this many days ago, weeks ago, months ago, or you can do it based on a particular date range, which, which I, I like to do, or you can do it on the value. So I want to just say one particular value, which is a day. But let's just do it on date range. In that case, I want to show all the information for those invoices pertaining to this fiscal year. So now the actual record underlying will update and will show 182 records available. In addition to the standard kind of fields that come across when you create your data set, being your date, your entity records, like your customer, as an example, transaction numbers and the rest, I want to drag other information across as well. So let's go and drag across, uh, okay, who created it? Okay, so let's do created by, so that way we can see who actually created those invoice records. I'd also like to bring across uh, days open. That's not a bad one. Therefore, I can see how many days these invoices are open. Um, let's also bring across the estimated cost and drag it right to the end to sit next to the actual transaction total. Um, the gross, estimated gross profit I want to show as well. The estimated gross profit percentage. Let's also drag a cross. Uh, maybe the status wouldn't be a bad thing to drag across because then I can see whether the invoices are, are open 
or close. So let's put the status over here. And let's also bring the sales rep over because then we can say, okay, any invoices that aren't unpaid, and at least I know who the sales rep are, and I can have them um, you know, pushed in accordingly. So once I've done that and I'm happy with the actual data set, um, I can save it. And when I save it, I give it a name. Yeah, save. I have the ability to also export it as well into a CSV file. Um, you also have the ability to share it as well, so you can share it based on an employee or, or a set of roles. Um, but once saved, you can create your workbook from that data. So let's do that. So let's create the workbook from that data set. So from dragging all those fields across and all those filters um, and criteria that we applied on it, I'm now seeing all the information um, and records that I can choose from. The first part of the creating the workbook is selecting what visualization type you like, whether it's a table, pivot, and a chart. So let's just start off with pivot, because everyone loves a good pivot table. Um, and, as, and now you're actually in the pivot view. So this is where you're now actually dragging and dropping your individual fields to create your pivot for a particular row column and measures. So the measures obviously is the easy one, so let's just go and drag all those measures we, we brought in uh, into it. And we can also structure it in a way to have it sequenced accordingly. So, um, so what I mean by that is I want to show the estimated cost to be first, I want to show next to be the gross profit percentage, gross profit, and then the total. And on top of that, now I'm going to be aligning um, the relevant fields to the actual column and row um, elements of the pivot. So let's uh, let's drag across the status to the column, which you can drag it either here or you can drag it into the bigger area up the top. Um, and let's do just a bit of a refresh and see what that looks like. Okay, so it's giving me the total. Maybe we need to bring the entity record and do it at the row level. When I do that, it will basically bring a pop-up to say, do you want to show the child entities or do you want them consolidated at the hierarchy level? So let's do it at the individual childs because a, a, a customer and supplier can have uh, parent-child relationships. So very quickly, I've just, um, I've just created a very quick pivot on the entity, the cost, uh, estimated profit percentage, profit sum, transaction totals, uh, and split them over columns, whether it's paid in full or invoices that are open. Uh, I can quickly just do a quick filter as well if I wanted to and just filter on the status and just say I want to show all the invoices that are open. I'm not interested in showing the ones that are closed. I'll just create a quick uh, filter on that record as well. Uh, these little bits up here, it's just your sums, for instance. How would you like to place your sums? Would you like to place them uh, at the top, the bottom? So let's just do them at the bottom. Uh, let's freeze uh, the columns and the first row. And now I've got my report and I can see right down the bottom what the totals are. Um, so that was just a very quick and easy um, way of doing it. Let's also um, just create a bit of a quick update on it and let's just push the transaction over into the, into the um, rows as well because we want to see all the individual transactions that are contained for each and every customer. So we can see that now, right? So for instance, for oh, quantum systems, I think I've clicked into it, it's taken me to the underlying transactions. So there is drill down capabilities as well. So you can see it's taken me right to the customer. So you can see all these little ones here, I can actually drill into the actual records. Um, so you can see now for all the invoices pertaining to quantum systems, here are the invoices, here's the total sums that invoices are open. And at the same time, I can also drag across the days um, open as well as a, uh, as a column. Hopefully that uh, doesn't make it look pretty crazy, but uh, let's have a look. Yeah, so that now it's actually what number of days it is open across every single in, uh, um, customer invoice. So yeah, it's a bit of a, a bit of a quick view of how to do pivots. I can change a pivot name here and call it instead of pivot, I can call it invoice and save it. I can create a new 
tab like you would in the spreadsheet or you're creating an individual sheet for, for, for a, uh, a workbook or a spreadsheet. So in this case, you know, I can just go and create a table view um, and as part of the table, I mean, it's not table view, um, a graph view. As part of the graph view, I can um, drag and drop my field as well. So let's do that. So let's just drag all the ones for measures like we did earlier. Total. And then we want to do the series. Um, so we'll leave the series blank. Um, we'll do the entity record or the customer record at the um, X for X. Um, axes and we want to change the name as well we'll rename it because entity record doesn't sound as good we want to call it the customer um, and then we'll refresh that and see what the graph looks like so now this will show me a column chart which you can also update as well to produce a different um, bar chart type um, and you can see now for every single customer the individual measures um, if you hover over it, it shows you those individual values. Because we've got four measures, you, you, you will have four individual bar, uh, bars for each customer. So you may want to change that to look to actually have a stacked um, chart instead. So let's just do that and have one bar for each customer. As you can see, that's what it looks like. Um, so you hover over it, it's a transaction total, um, the profit value. Uh, and the estimated cost, right? So you can say, yeah, that's, uh, that's a quick bit of um, update as a stack. And then I can change the actual names of the uh, of each of the fields. So we'll call it invoice uh, uh, fiscal 2020. We can call the x, x, uh, x axis, we'll call it uh, AUD, and y axis, we'll, we'll call it customer. And I can easily uh, just refresh that. When I refresh it. The actual the title will change down the bottom. Oh, I've done it the wrong way around actually. Um, and then can update accordingly. So once you're done and you've saved your your report, um, you can just uh, save, give it the name, invoice, workbook. Fiscal year, save that, and then share it again to whoever you want to share it with. And we'll share it with the administrator, save, and there it is, done. So just quick demo on Sweet Analytics. I, I hope uh, you enjoyed it.